You know, like many aspects of American society, there was a time when figure skating was an all-white, exclusive enterprise. Throughout the years, there have been a number of important, determined individuals who have broken down barriers and helped begin to make this sport reflect the makeup of society itself. Donna Deverona has more on their stories. These children belong to a club called Figure Skating in Harlem. Every day after school, they come here to the rink to take lessons in the sport they love. Back in the 1930s, here in New York, another girl was growing up in Harlem dreaming of becoming a skater. Some rinks turned her away, but sometimes at the end of the day when the last skating session had ended and all the white customers had gone home for the night, she was allowed on the rink. She simply wouldn't give up. Her name was Mabel Fairbanks. Mabel Fairbanks was the grand dame of African-American skaters. Mabel was a woman who, in the 30s, um, skated in New York. And being an African-American woman, she had a lot of obstacles to go through. She's told me stories of what it felt like to be able to, you know, take your little money and after watching the skaters, taking your money, placing it there at the counter and saying, I'd like admission to skate. And they would look at her and say, I'm sorry, little girl, you're colored. We, you can't skate here because in the 30s, figure skating had really pretty locked doors. At that time, figure skaters could only enter the national championships as representatives of local skating clubs. But no club would accept Mabel Fairbanks. So Mabel left New York and toured with a professional show outside the United States. And eventually she settled in Los Angeles and began a skating school of her own where everyone was welcome. She brought a sense of integrity and pride and that just drew a rainbow color of skaters. And everyone was treated equally. Mabel was the teacher who taught all races all types of skaters, rich, poor. She just had this really special quality, really magical, and just, you know, took everyone in. Mabel joined forces with the skaters at the Polar Palace rink in Los Angeles. One of their skaters, Catherine Machado, had joined a skating club and had recently become the first Latina skater to win a medal at nationals. Mabel decided to get her own protégés into a skating club so they too could compete. I was the first African-American uh, member of the Los Angeles Figure Skating Club, and I had the honor of being the first African-American to win a national novice title in 1966. Mabel Fairbanks is the reason why there's a tie in Randy. For some reason, she said, Ty, hold his hand and just skate around the rink. That's, that's all I want. From those first baby steps on the ice, Ty and Randy would go on to become the only U.S. pair team to win the world championship in the last 50 years. My mom is black. My dad was half Filipino and half Hopi Indian. I never felt any discrimination. I just knew, and she instilled this in us, that the best skater would win. You go out and skate, you're going to win. It doesn't matter, you could be green. In 1986, Debbie Thomas completed the journey that Mabel Fairbanks had begun 50 years earlier. That was the year that Debbie became the first African-American to win the U.S. title. When I got out there and they announced my name, you know, the crowd just, they went nuts. Debbie Thomas. I told myself I was just going to take it one jump at a time. As I landed each one, I just emotionally got so involved with the audience and they were just with me and they were just riding this high and it was just the most incredible performance. It's actually interesting that I was able to figure skate and become a world champion, whereas one generation ago, my mother wasn't even allowed in ice skating rings. She would travel with her dance troupe around the country. She wouldn't, you know, be allowed to eat at the same table with the rest of the dance troupe. In Calgary, Debbie entered the history books as the first black athlete from any country to medal at a Winter Olympics. I started getting letters from young African-American kids who never thought that it was possible to be a figure skater. It was a good feeling to know that the things that I had done affected some people in a positive way. The 1980s were the beginning of an era that would transform the sport's all-white image. Debbie Thomas competed at the same time as another barrier breaker, Tiffany Chin. And today it's not surprising to see an Asian American on the top step of the podium. 
But in 1985, when Tiffany Chin captured a first U.S. title, she was a pioneer. When I was growing up and ice skating, just starting, I never really felt through my skating career any discrimination towards my ethnicity. Surprisingly, um, sometimes outside of my sport, but never in my sport. I think one of the great things about ice skating, or probably all sports, is it, there's a real um, judgment of how one executes a skill. It's about what you do and who you are, and not, um, you know, your ethnicity. I certainly remember Tiffany Chin, and she was one of my favorite skaters. I specifically remember thinking, wow, she's the first, you know, Asian American national champion, and I definitely wanted to be like Tiffany. <laughs> the Yamaguchis came to the U.S. in the early 1900s, but their pursuit of the American dream was interrupted during World War II. My grandfather was fighting over in Germany for the U.S. Army. His wife, my grandmother, was back here at home, and Pretty much the safest place for her was in the internment camps. My mom was born in the internment camp. And then on my father's side, uh, his whole family was relocated to a camp. Afterwards, it was pretty much like starting over for both families. But they were fiercely patriotic and wanted to move on and, and focus on the future. A generation later, the Yamaguchi's daughter became the champion of the United States and won a gold medal for her country at the Olympics. Winning the gold was um, a personal triumph, but I know I share it with a lot of people out there. A friend of mine um, was quoted saying it was a new face to an American figure skater. And I guess, you know, through all the struggles that the Japanese American had, I think to them, they saw me as that next generation that had succeeded. With Christy Yamaguchi, Rudy Galindo won two U.S. titles, the first ever for an Hispanic skater. But it was in his hometown of San Jose that Rudy gave his breakthrough performance. Being a national champion is a dream come true for any skater. Every skater has contributed to the sport in their own way. Being Mexican-American, you know, I think I contributed um, to people that their nationality, they can still continue in the sport. Me being openly gay, you don't have to give up or you don't have to hide. You don't have to give up on your dream. There is no one in their seats at this point. These barrier breakers opened doors for those who came next. For some, success was a long time in coming, but they all reached their destination. It was the right timing for the sport to open its door and not be exclusive, but inclusive of everyone.
of Carol and Peter Kennedy in 1950, 29 years ago. This then is a very big moment for American figure skating. And they are the leaders. And the first of their program, the first five or six moves are the power moves and the difficult ones. They open first with a throw triple Salgao. Here it is. Hey. Beauty, lovely. Very nice. A good start. Their next, a split double twist. Here it is. That was nice. The difference with the looseness with which she landed compared to some of the Russians in the earlier movements are the difference in maturity. Look at the extension the oh, arm that. Very, very fun. One arm, one lift into a star lift. Side by side splits. Double flips. And a throw. Double axle. Here it is, watch him lift her. Nice, nice, nice. What they are doing is skating with control. They know that they are the champions so far, and they're showing it every inch of the way. Steady, secure, and complete. Hi, Babylonia, age 18. Randy Gardner, 20. They're both from Los Angeles. Five years ago, they were the youngest pair ever to represent the United States. Now, as Dick said, more mature, much more. These Arabians pull. Look at the energy and the snap to them. And a... Now, the winner in the novice skating, Joan Campbell of Los Angeles Figure Skating Club. This was her first nationals after five years of skating. Joan's parents both were the Los Angeles City Schools. of San Jose and Frankie Hermanson of Rockford, Illinois. As we watch Bobby Beauchamp from Los Angeles, let me remind you that tonight on CTV you can watch a super world television premiere, Brubaker, starring Robert Redford. That's this evening on CTV Sunday Night Movie Special. You know, Otto, what I like about Bobby skating are the bridges between the choice of music that he uses and the sections in his program correspond so well. The continuity is incredible and it just goes on the same all the way through. Debbie Thomas theme for this world championship, certainly for her life as an ice skater and a pre-med student at Stanford has been 
relax. She's told us that all week. How do you relax when Katarina Vinn has just skated a program like she did? And you're on the ice after only being in one previous world championship. Like, seems like she doesn't fit into the skating world. She doesn't feel the same pressures to have to perform and to have to win championships. She came here and it was like, I'm going to win. No problem. Well, this music is very powerful, very strong, very hard driving. This is her two jump combination. Oh, oh. spectacular. Look at the position in that camel. That's good.
only his jumping, Nicky, was at the same standard as the rest of his skating. The way he moves over the ice and his fluid movements with his body and his arms and the way he dances to the music is really exciting, but I mean, the triple looks, look round, it looks safe, and then he just fell off, over-rotated it. But he does land the jump, they look so good. Five triple looks, double toe. Double axle.
He also is one of the few skaters that is a full-time student. He is a sophomore at Stanford. Interesting individual, too. He's taken tap and jazz dance classes. Classical pianist and uh, also the first African-American ever to win the junior world title. Medals handed out, Olympic first one, here tonight at the Core State Center. And here is an exciting skater that you're going to watch for a lot of years. Only 17 years of age, and guess when she turned 17? Today. It is her birthday. Andrea Gardner in seventh place after the short program. Well, every American lady that has won the Olympic championship was born in a month beginning with Jay. That's a bit of trivia for you. You are a wealth of knowledge, <laughs> Mr. Button. I don't know whether to believe you or not, but you are a plethora of knowledge. That's absolutely true. Well, he got true. my birthday right. July. She is opening with a triple loop. Back edge takeoff, back outside edge. But look at the speed she has going into this. Nice. First thing I think you notice about Andrea is that she presents herself with an almost regal quality and she gives importance to her moves. And now a double toe combination, triple, nicely done.
Triple sow cow. Good oh. fight. Wonderful control on that landing. Good speed. Pretty impressive start to their careers together. I mean, they've only been together since May of 99. They won the U.S. junior title. Again, that lift traveling a long distance on the ice. Very nice. Opening with a solid double twist. Marcy and Aaron are one of the most attractive couples, appealing couples in the competition. They're not as strong technically. They'll need this throw triple loop. Coming up side by side, triple toes. They both went down on these in warm up. They had a rough warm up. Good job. Able to save it there. Aaron uh, fell on a triple toe in the short time. Only the second time he's fallen, it appears. Now. Before that short program, Marcy said to Aaron, Let's enjoy this. This is our dream. Partnership has given each of them a second chance at the sport, both figuring they were done until they decided to try out together. And, and their sense of joy when they skate is palpable. I feel the gratitude of being back here on competition ice. This is more like it.
geworpen drievoudige flip. Fenomenaal. Zo hoog en zeker. En de twistlift een beetje scheef ten opzichte van elkaar. Drievoudige getal op. His biggest element, Quad Sao Cao. Really nice.
song of these songs. Yeah. <laughs> Every jump from here on out receives that 10% bonus for being in the second half of the program. She has all green in her little boxes, which is very good, but her technical content is a bit lower than what we will see in the later group. She had a triple toe, triple toe, but we'll see more difficult triple triples. Have a moment in time, Star. Take it all in right now. Star Andrews, ladies and gentlemen. Star Andrews. She must be in heaven. How cool is this? Stay out there for a while. Take your time. Yeah. Aw. Soak it all in. Centroni Salfo.
Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames et messieurs, from France, Vanessa James, the Morgan Cyprès.